Hello, welcome to this video. I want to show you today how to use the AET filter in contact to uh, crossfade between different dynamics. In previous videos I've looked at how to do this using uh, modulators, so you can use the mod wheel to crossfade between different recordings of dynamic layers. Now sometimes you can get phasing issues as you fade between the different layers, so the AET filter is an alternate way to achieve the same thing. But instead of actually crossfading between the layers using using volume crossfades, it uses a dynamic filter. So it's kind of like using an EQ. And this is a feature that's available in Contact. It's in Contact 4 and 5. It's not perfect, but it's something worth looking at and knowing about because in some situations it can do the job better than fading through dynamic layers using volume fades. So let's have a quick look. I've got a project here and I've got three dynamic layers and you can see in the mapping editor I've just put one sample in each and I've spread it across the whole range so if I play it up here and if I play it down here it's the same sample so it sounds horrible so we'll stick to sort of playing in the middle region so that's the F layer the mezzo piano and the piano I'm just using group solo here so we can just hear one of them at a time okay so we're going to start by clicking edit all groups and although we've only got three layers here this would work for any number of dynamic layers I'm going to close the mapping editor I'm going to come down to modulators and I'm going to add a modulator for the mod wheel and we'll set this intensity slider to around 50%. Okay, I'm going to turn off edit all groups and make sure just the F group is selected. We can check over here as well in the monitor. The F group is the only one with a with its checkbox ticked. I'm going to open the mapping editor again. Make sure selected groups only is on because we only want to see the groups uh, we only want to see the samples in the F group. And Usually you'd have more than one sample in a group, so select them all. In my case I've just got one, so I'll just click that. And then what we've got to do is create what's called a, a morph layer. And basically what Contact's going to do is analyze the frequencies in our sample and build up a, a kind of EQ profile. So we're going to go to um, Edit. And you can also bring this menu up, by the way, by right-clicking, just in the Zone Editor. But we'll go to Edit, and we'll go down to Create AET Morph Layer. And this nice little box pops up. In here, we're going to give it a name. We're going to give this Morph Layer a name, and it's going to be F, which is the name of our group, so that we can relate this Morph Layer to this group. Uh, we don't have to worry about any of these other settings. If you have problems with your morph layer, if there's artifacts or you're getting phasing type sounds, you can play around with the smoothing value. And you can also change the analysis range if you want using this. But usually I just start with the default settings and then if I have problems then I play around with it later. This is something that you just need to experiment with. There isn't really one right answer to it. Usually the default works fine. I'm going to hit OK. and you saw that little box pop up that's just contact analyzing the samples analyzing the um, the frequency material in the sample now if you've got a lot of samples it's going to take longer obviously I've only got one here so that was really quick okay now we'll go to the mezzo piano group we'll select all the samples in that group go to edit create a team morph layer and we'll type in MP for this one, hit OK. And that was incredibly quick. Contact analyzed the sample and built what it calls a spectral fingerprint, which is just a an EQ map, really. Um, and we'll do the same for the piano group. OK, let's close up the mapping editor for now and let's hit save. By the way, when you're actually doing this, it's a good idea to 
save a copy of your project, a backup copy, before you do any of this AET stuff because it can mess up the sample sometimes, things may go wrong. So back up everything before you do any of this. Okay, I'm going to hit save here. And we'll just save it there. Okay, so now we've got our morph layers created. We've got an F, um, an MP, and a P morph layer. So th what that means is Contact's now got three spectral fingerprints, i.e. three EQ curves that represent the samples in each group. The next thing to do is create what's known as a morph map. And this is how we're going to get Contact to fade between those three different EQ curves. So we'll go back to the edit menu. Oh, it's the edit menu in the mapping editor. Sorry, let's reopen the mapping editor. Go to the edit menu and go down to open EAT morph map editor. And there's the, um, the, the spectral fingerprints, the morph layers we created just a minute ago. So now we're going to create a morph map. So if we go up to the top here, we're going to give our map a name and it's going to be P and then we'll put dash MF dash and then F. And this is just for our reference so that we know that this is a morph map that goes from dynamic P up to dynamic F. And then we'll hit add. And you can see we've now got uh, this new box here so we can add our um, our morph layers to this. So to do that we just click the morph layer and then click this left arrow to move it into the left hand side box. Do the same for the MP and do the same for the F. So now we've got a morph map of P to F. And we're not doing a velocity morph single layer, we're doing what's called an articulation morph or multiple layers. So we'll select that uh, radio button there and now we'll hit OK. So we can close the mapping editor now and in the group editor we want to make sure we've selected the F layer and we're going to go down to the group insert effect, that's this section here and on the first one we're going to add a filter no we're not, we're going to add an effect, sorry and we're going to go down to AET filter and this adds the AET filter which is where the um, morphing will actually take place and the first thing we need to do is select our morph map that we created in the last step which is just here see it says no morph map click that and our map is there if you've made multiple morph maps for different reasons you'll have more than one in there and then this morph knob if, if I actually play a note now you'll see stuff appear down here Okay. so that's our three layers and this morph knob determines how far we are through the morph of these layers and I'm going to Press the note and move this knob and you'll see what will happen. Okay, so what's happening there, we can see this EQ um, display here. And you'll see it's going from flat when we're at the F layer. And then it's going down and changing to the um, the spectral image of the of the piano layer. And you can hear a, a slight change in tone there. And um, what it's basically doing is it's saying, when you play the F layer, just play it as you would. Just the samples are playing straight. There's no EQ effectively. It's completely flat. As we go down to the P section of the morph, it's applying the, the piano group's um, spectral image to the F group samples. So we're only ever hearing the samples in the F group. You can see we've got the F group soloed here. Now it's quite a subtle change on these particular samples. But what we'll do is we'll combine it with the modulator we set up down here for the volume so we get more of a, a dynamic fade. But the first thing we've got to do is map this morph knob to the mod wheel as well. And we do that, we can do it in two ways. We can do it by right clicking and selecting the uh, MIDI CC. Or we can just come down to the modulator section and do the same thing as we would usually. So what these two modulators will do when I move the mod wheel is this bottom one here will create a volume 
um, modulation. It'll lower the volume when the mod wheel is lower and raise it when the mod wheel is higher. And this top one is going to create a timbral change by imprinting the uh, mezzo piano and piano uh, morph layer um, spectral fingerprint things, the EQ um, curves of these layers onto the F layer. And I'll do that now. I'll move the mod wheel and play a key and we should get quite a convincing dynamic um, fade. I'd like to hear a bit more of a volume fade there when it's at the lowest point, so I'm just going to adjust this. Now you can probably hear some graininess in that. Some, it's kind of like artifacting. What we can do is increase the lag time to something like 120. We can play around with this and see what works best. And that should help smooth out some of that, um, that graininess. So that's quite nice. We've got the phase-free morph there between the three layers. So if you were going to write a script for this instrument, you'd want to make sure only the F group was enabled because the P group doesn't have an AAT filter. We could add one if we want, which is why we've left this modulator here in case we wanted to add an AAT filter and just do a, a, a shorter fade um, between the piano and the mezzo piano. Um, but in actual fact, we could remove this modulator from these two groups. It's not actually needed. So the only group we're hearing is the F group and if you were to write a script you'd want it to enable only this group because I'm going to take the group solo off now and we'll hear all three groups playing at the same time. <laughs> So you can hear this kind of weird stuff going on there. Um, for some bizarre reason, Contact still requires us to keep these two groups, even though only the F group's playing and we've got a, a kind of record of the EQ curve of these two groups, we still need to have those two groups and all their samples in the instrument, which is a uh, slightly annoying because if we didn't, we could reduce the size of our instrument's um, uh, sample folder. But for whatever reason, Contact doesn't save the spectral fingerprints without having the samples and the groups there as well. Now, currently we've got this EQ going, if I open the map, it's a linear, um, a linear gradient. So you can see if you follow the, the line in this box down here in the modulation table with the line up in the AT filter, but you may not want it to be that shape. If you want um, more of an exponential curve, you can just play around in this modulation table. And uh, you can do the opposite by raising it up, or you can do any number of weird shapes that you prefer. So there's all kinds of things you can do. And you can see in the AAT filter how it reacts to these different curves. Let's just reset that. You can of course do the same thing to the volume curve as well down here. So that's the AAT filter and how to morph between different layers. You don't just have to use this for dynamic layers. If you wanted to morph a trumpet into a flute, you could do that as well. You can use it for all kinds of things. There is another form of the AAT filter, which if I bring up the editor again, you'll see it. If we go into edit, and um, morph map editor there is the velocity morph and the single which is the single layer morph that's for if you're using velocity to control the um, dynamic layers rather than using a mod wheel or another cc um, uh, another midi controller and for that there's instead of creating an AT morph layer you may want to do the auto add AT velocity morph and this is detailed in the contact manual so one other thing I should mention is 
um, I have noticed in Contact 4 and 5, there does seem to be an issue sometimes if your samples are recorded at 48 kilohertz or your sam your your, um, your setup is for 48 kilohertz, you sometimes get uh, like little artifacts popping up and little crackling noises. Um, and I think that may be one reason why we're not seeing many commercial libraries being released with the AAT filter. It does seem to have that bug. Um, it doesn't always happen, doesn't seem to happen today. But um, just be aware of it that if you are experiencing crackling noises and you've set the lag time and you've you've definitely um, got nice smooth um, um, morph maps, then it's probably an issue with um, with the actual samples or the um, your your audio card setup, and doesn't seem to be anything we can do about it at the moment. All right, guys, hope you found this useful, and I'll see you next time.